how are we doing, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV, joined, as you can see, by Ajax, an Ajax fan who watches Ajax. Ajax, it's good, it's great. Um, <laughs> oh, look, thank you very much, uh, my friend, for joining me today. And, and uh, for those of you who are watching, look, all United fans are, are mega excited about the idea of Eric Ten Hag coming in. I want to sort of do this interview with, uh, with, with Ajax sort of respectfully, because he, he's still your manager. You've got a cup final coming on Sunday. How has it been this week uh, as an Ajax fan? Obviously, I'm guessing you had some, you, you had a feeling that he was probably going to be leaving this summer. Uh, I think that's kind of, it, well, from the outside looking in, it, it felt like, you know, he's he's had two rebuilds and the way he's gone through things. It felt like he's probably gone as far as he could with Ajax. But how has it been this week with the news that's broken that he's uh, had a verbal agreement with Manchester United? What have the, What's the fans' reaction been? Uh, first of all, uh, Sam, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, the, we are used to getting poached, you know, so we have a long-standing history that we already a little bit used to getting rid of certain players, not even rid, but saying goodbye to them, uh, saying goodbye to managers. And this is just happening again. And uh, we're actually quite happy that we got him for that many years, you know, and he brought us a lot of joy, success, and also put us back on the map a bit in Europe. So, uh, and of course, in, in December, there were already big rumors of him or Pochettino maybe becoming the next manager. And then you got an interim with Rolf Ragnick. So we already had in our back of our minds for like a half a year, maybe at the end of the season, if they come back again, Poch not doing very well at PSG, you know, getting eliminated in the Champions League. Maybe we, um, we uh, will lose him now definitely to, to Manchester United. So we're quite sad. But also, I've heard amongst the fans that some fans also think maybe it's a fresh start. Not that we are not unhappy with him, but also if somebody's at the helm of your club that long, some people always have like some remarks, this can be better, that can be better. And they say maybe a new manager can bring some fresh, uh, yeah, a f fresh new face to the club with a new philosophy. But we are very happy with him. And personally, Sam, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him a lot. And um, obviously, you guys have got a cup final on Sunday against PSV. Hopefully, Ten Hag can win his third domestic double in five years, which is fantastic, right? Um, has it affected your your plans and your build-up? How has Ten... Because I know that the English journalists have been banned from the IX press conferences uh, to avoid all the questions being asked. Because it's... I suppose it's like the worst-kept secret in football. It's not announced yet, and I don't think it will be until after the cup final. Uh, but has it... Affected Ten Hag, do you think, in the build-up to it? Has it affected... Um, yeah. If he does not win the double, with this team, I've stated it before the season, with this team, you have to win the double. The gap is too big with the other rifles. And if he fails on winning the double, and also the league is still not, not clear, you know, we're four yeah. points ahead. We still have to, I think, uh, play PSV in a, in a, in a direct uh, match. So we can still have a problem maybe becoming champions. I have faith we will. But for me, everything less than a double is a failure this season because uh -huh. we got eliminated against uh, Benfica. And this was something that we did not uh, count on, you know, because we were that great in the group stage. We won all of the matches. And then we got out against Benfica, who was not playing better than we were. So we're still a bit shocked. So everything is now on a domestic cup and, and competition. Um, obviously, you, you mentioned there that you're, you're going to miss Ten Hag. And I completely understand that. What's... Um... What's his relationship been like with the fans since the start? Since he came in, was when he came in, was he the manager that you really wanted? You know, how how has his relationship with the the Ajax fans developed over time? Has he always been loved, or have there been some sort of down points during those five years? There have definitely been some down points, especially in Europe. Uh, but yeah, he he took over the helm uh, of um, what was his name, Marcel Kaiser, I believe. He was uh, only like six months at the club, I believe, and Ten Hag uh, came in the January window. And Marcel Kaiser had to fill the shoes of Peter Bosz, who put uh, Ajax back on the map with that Europa League final against Manchester United that we unfortunately lost. Thank yeah. you. Well, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, um, and it, it didn't went that well with him. So he got to replace him uh, in the first half of the season and it took a little while for him to implement his style of football. And unfortunately for us, the way he likes to play football and the philosophy of our club Ajax, they are quite similar. So um, they, it, it went hand in hand, you know, during those seasons and it became more stable and we won a lot of prizes. He became champions. We, yeah, in, 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 in several years um, adjacent now. Only one year that we were at the first place um, tied with, I believe, uh, Asset. 
Uh, we had a better, um, how, do you, how do you call this? Goal difference. Goal difference, yeah. But because of the corona, the competition was cut short. And uh, it was decided that Ajax was champion, but it wouldn't count as a real championship, you know? So mm -hmm. we went to the Champions League, but because not all matches were played, you cannot count it as one of the titles won. So, uh, yeah, we count it as a championship, but actually it, in the history, it will not be a championship. But he, he performed so so well in, in, in Dutch competition. And after uh, Frank de Boer, he's the best performing manager of, with winning league titles. Maybe he's tight even, I'm, I'm not sure, but... This is something that you cannot replace easily. And to get back to your question, um, yeah, we are quite sad with how it went in Europe a few times. This is the thing that are some criti criticism on him about because we went out against Spurs. We were a better team in the last moments. We got eliminated. We all know that match in the semifinal uh, in 2019. Yeah. Uh, also, we, we uh, got eliminated against Getafe last year against Roma. And we're all against teams this year against Benfica that were like defensive kind of teams. And we were just playing our philosophy. We couldn't score the goal and we got countered on. And this is something that some of the fans blame him on, um, a lack of a plan B. A lack of a plan. Well, in, uh, is, so he's very stubborn towards his own plan. And if it doesn't work, you just keep trying and keep trying. And sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, that's exactly what I, uh, what I think is the problem. But I can see a little bit of improvement the last couple of matches, finally. But usually, he, uh, with my criticism on him, he waits too long with substituting. He just uh, carries out the plan as he, uh, as he did before the match, you know, uh, instructing the players how to play, not changing a lot uh, during the, during the halftime break. And this is my main criticism on him. But I could see this season, the last couple of matches, a little bit of a turnaround in this because he was able to turn around the match when we were behind bring players earlier. So maybe he finally learned his lesson right before the move to Man United. So you guys are lucky. <laughs> but good. Uh, let's, I, I like that. I like that. But um, one thing that me as an outside fan watching Ajax, that I've been so impressed by with Eric Ten Hag is if you look at that team from 2018-19 and you had obviously a bit of a golden generation, didn't you? You had, you had De Ligt, you had De Jong, you had Van Der Beek, you had just a great crop coming through from the academy. And Ajax, more than most clubs in world football have an ability to sell their best players and bring new players in from the youth. Obviously, you have Masraoui, who's still in the team. Then you had Jurian Timber, who came in over the over the course of those few years. And it's not not replaced Delic, but he's gone in there alongside, is it, Martinez, I think. Yeah, Martinez. And then yeah. Blind's moved, Melinda's moved to left-back, a uh, sort of head of a Tagliafico, right? And then yeah. Gravenberch has come in, semi-playing the, the, uh, the young role, but sort of Alvarez, I know, drops deeper as well. That's probably been what I would say is the most impressive thing. The fact that he's built two teams and lost a lot of players. What uh, What's um, Eric Ten Hag's relationship like with the academy? Uh, what, does he coach younger players differently? Does he treat younger players differently? Has he got a different way of working with them? Because for United fans, that's a big reason why we're so excited. We've got a lot of really good youngsters at the moment and we need a coach to come and really get the most out of them. How How does he do that? How, how does he get turn these players into really top-level players as a coach? Yeah, partly it's because of the academy, uh, of course, because we are training those players in the youth uh, squads already to play the Ajax philosophy. So part of this is that our our talents know how to play in the first-team squad. But also, he's been very good with them. Uh, like you said before, uh, usually we get poached, the biggest players leave, like the Licht, like Frankie de Jong, like Donny van der Beek. And uh, he he um, managed to keep performing and fill those gaps. And usually you think, okay, this is going to be a gap year, you know, we have to rebuild everything. Maybe we will not win any prize, but he consistently managed to keep performing and like fill in those gaps. And the um, lucky for us, we, we got some funds from those transfers, you know, the lift went for like 85 million. Frankie de Jong went for 75 million. I believe Donny van der Beek was around 40, I believe. Uh, 30 to 40, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, with all those funds coming available to the club and also performing domestically and in Europe, we got a lot more money to spend. So we were also able to attract like top-notch talent players from other countries like an Anthony at the moment. But we mm -hmm. probably will get uh, uh, to the player later on. But this is uh, something that you also have to give credit to Ten Hag because he's able to motivate those players um, and implement them in the team. Uh, for example, Durian Timber, he went into the first team and he stayed there. 
He's he's been a rock, and and I only uh, saw him make one mistake against uh, PSV in one match that we luckily uh, uh, won in the end. So uh, for him, that's lucky that it was not the mistake that that cost us points. But for for all the majority of all the other matches, he's been stable. And this guy's like 18 or 19 years old, you know, and he's been there as a professional, almost like a like a experienced player already. And he's so young. So this is also credit to Ten Hag. You know, he knows how to keep the balance with with talented players and also some experienced players like Blind, Tadic, uh, also from the bench, Lat Klasse. And this mix of, 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 of age, experience and youth, yeah, he, he perfected it last year. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I was very sad when uh, Daddy Blind left Manchester United. I thought he left a little bit too early. I think we could really have done with um, him in the squad. But Blind is obviously he's a great player. But one of his key characteristics is sort of progressive passing. He likes passing it from the back, and that's a big reason why I believe he's in the he's in the team ahead of Tagliafico. Yeah. Uh, is that is that would you say that's at the the core of Ten Hag's style of play? Is it always playing it out from the back? With it? it's never like kicked long from the by the goalkeeper. Is it always played out among the defenders and trying to pass it through? Is that the way it works? And then if yeah. it doesn't work, you just keep trying and trying it. Would you say that's the Ten Hag style? This is the Ajax style also. We play high ball possession and we have players that are comfortable on the ball. And none of our players, maybe for the exception of Edson Alvarez, who's more like a defensive pivot that keeps the balance, and maybe Sebastian Haller, the, the target man in, the, in front, they all can play ball. They all can deliver passes. Like, um, no problem with, with Lisandro Martinez and Jurian Timber in the back. If they get pressed on, they just dance away and they, they find the room and they're so comfortable. Also, usually our goalkeepers. So this is definitely something that he, he will try to implement at Manchester United, I think. But I do see some difficulties there, to be honest, Sam, with your squad at the moment. And yes. there are some, some players that cannot even, like, deliver yeah. ball. Five yards uh, further, you know, or even players that like appeal that somebody's uh, making a handball and then it's his own player, you know. I will not uh, mention any names. Honestly, I know you talk. I think like, who who could you be talking? About? I have no <laughs> idea. But um, I, I, it's, I, honestly, if I'm gonna say the biggest weakness of Manchester United is our inability to play out from the back with the ball, we just we just cannot do it. We don't have the confidence. So that's definitely going to be the biggest problem, which. You you obviously alluded to his name there. You, you mentioned both of them. That's it, actually. Jurian Timber and um, and Anthony. Yeah. Um, are you worried that Eric Ten Hag leaving might mean that either or both of those players follow him to Manchester United? Do you think that could happen? And obviously, Ajax have it, it's part of your uh, how you run as a club. You do sell players and then you replace them from younger players from the academy. And it's how it's how the system works. Do you, do you fear that Timber will leave this year? And if you were going to choose one to hold on to as an Ajax fan, who which which one of those two players would you say is more important to you? Oh, this is such a, um, a nasty question. Because... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're, no worries, Sam. It's, 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 it's difficult to choose because it's it's choosing between a defender and a winger, you know. It's it's totally different ball game. But um, I think Anthony is on the nomination earlier to leave. And I think Timber, because he's that young still, that we hold on to him at least one more year. This is my feeling. So if somebody moves with Ten Hag, I think it would be Anthony before Timber. But I think your squad would benefit more from Timber than Anthony because the defense is is a big problem at your club. And um, yeah, if I have to choose, I do think I will choose for Timber to keep at Ajax. Yeah, but, you, but you're completely right. If, if I was to get an ideal situation, I would definitely choose to bring in Timber because, because he, it's such a fundamental part of Ten Hag's start of play. I mean, Rafael Varane can play that way. Of course he can. He played at Real Madrid, won four Champions Leagues. He knows what it's like to play in a possession-based uh, team that controls the game. Harry Maguire doesn't. He's he's more suited to playing in a counter-attacking team rather than the team. That, because I, I, I imagine uh, Ajax play with quite a high line. You like to sort of sit towards the edge of the half, make the pitch smaller. You know, we've all heard how Ten Hag plays. And it's, it's very exciting, but there is so much that really has to change at Manchester United for, for it to work. And I, I think something that United fans would uh, like to know a little bit more about, of, and it's not just uh, Eric Ten Hag, it's uh, Mitchell van der Gag, who yeah. of course is your assistant manager. Yeah. Um, what, sort of a, what sort of assistant manager is he? Because sometimes assistant managers are really quiet. They sit on the bench 
They don't really talk to anybody. They're not really involved. You're not really sure what they do. Is he that sort of assistant manager or is he quite vocal and up and part of what's going on? That is, that is quite difficult to say because I do not see him a lot during matches, you know, what, what he's doing. My focus is elsewhere. But I do think if, if I have to uh, give my opinion on him, uh, Sam, I do think he would be a great uh, second man for, uh, for Ten Hag. Uh, I, I compare him a little bit with uh, uh, Pepijn Leinders from Liverpool, you know, the second hand man of, of Klopp. Uh, he's not good enough for, for a coaching job as a first team manager, but he's experienced. He's 50 years old. Uh, he coached Jong Ajax. Uh, he, he coached abroad, you know, he was in Portugal and Cyprus. And he coached quite a few teams with, um, within the, in, the, in the Dutch leagues. So uh, also, he's a 4-3-3 adept. So he likes to play that kind of style. And this is also something that Ten Hag prefers. So I do think he will be an, uh, an asset to the team uh, and also to the coaching staff. But I have to be honest, I do not know how active of an assistant manager he is. That, 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 that answer I cannot give. But I do think he would be a right fit to be alongside him. I, I think it's... Um, I, I always find it strange if a new manager goes into a club and, and doesn't bring staff with him from the club he's leaving. Because it's Ten Hag is... He's coming into Manchester United and it's not a good environment. It really it really is not a good environment. At Ajax, obviously, Mark Overmars has left now. But you had the trio of... Overmars, Van der Sar and Ten Hag and it allowed Ten Hag to just focus on the football, focus at what he's good at. Manchester United, we're starting to build this structure in. We're starting to actually operate as a modern football club should. It's just, it's taken us a long, long time to do it. But um, you alluded to it, you, you talked about it previously about probably the low points that you would say uh, are the sort of the European disappointments with Ten Hag. Yeah. Uh, has he always had like a really good relationship with the fans or has there ever been some sort of like not falling out, but you know, like bad press conferences or things where he starts to get angry with the fans and starts to say things, or is it, has it always been a really good relationship between the Ajax fans and Ten Hag? He's a professional, uh, Sam, and uh, he does not tell any bullshit during press conferences. If he thinks that question is uncalled for, or he said before, like, I'm not going to answer on this. He just calls it out. He's not somebody that dances around the questions and try to be nice, you know, so he's not like being uh, angry or stuff, but he is being firm in his answers. So we will have to wait and see how he does that in English. But the, 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 the relationship with the fans towards him is great. Uh, there are some fans that think he should implement even more youth players. But the reality of the situation is because we had those money, that, that money to spend the last years and we could attract other talents that we could not get before, the gap between some of the youth players and the first team players is becoming bigger, you know. So only the, the real, real talents um, yeah, survive now, while in the past we had to rely more on talents that, that will not get a chance at the moment because the quality mm -hmm. difference is too big. But uh, yeah, for me personally, um, my, my uh, criticism on him were the substitutions and the lack of a plan B, but I cannot be mad at, at, at the guy, you know. He, he wants so many for us. He's been so consistent. He's been... Yeah, playing terrific football in Europe. Why, if, if you would be not having a good relationship with him, then you have to look at the history of our club because what he did last year is amazing and we love him for that. Now, um, if, you know, if all, I, I think it's a case of when now with, with Ten Hag. I think we, that's why we're having this conversation. But let's still say if, if he comes to Manchester and he, and he moves to the UK, what, yeah. what, do you, what do you think he would find the hardest? Uh, would it would it be just moving to Manchester? Would it be working in the Premier League? From your from your experience of him as a as an Ajax fan, and and you see what he's good at and what what maybe he struggles with, what do you think he would find the most difficult? Uh, in, like straight away at Manchester United. You you mean Sam? Uh, besides coaching Manchester United, because this is maybe <laughs> the most difficult job in the world at the moment. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe the, the 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 language. You know, I think he improved in this. But um, I think his vocabulary is, is great, but, but he, he sounds very Dutch, you know, like 10 times more Dutch than maybe Donny van der Beek. Uh, <laughs> so maybe, hopefully, he improves in this area. But, um, yeah, I cannot, I cannot know how the lifestyle will, will be for him, you know. It, with all due respect to Ajax, Manchester United as a club, you know, like what, what, what you have to do at the club compared to what you have to do at Ajax, it's just totally different because there's more... Uh, needed from a manager at, at the club, I believe, um, in, in your situation, you know, in, at Manchester United. And I think it's great that he asked for more power for buying players and selling players and being able to be involved in contract negotiations. 
because the problem at your club, and you know this yourself probably very well, it's, it's way deeper. The club is sick, you know, with the Glazers and with the way it's being um, run, you know, and this is the problem. And for him, asking more clarification, asking more power to be included in, in how the club is run and uh, 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 surrounding the, the first team squad. This is very important because asking for this up front uh, assures you that you that you will be able to carry it out as you like. And uh, I think a lot of managers were, were like, oh, Manchester United, let me just go there and I will make the difference. No, he is very, you can see he's a very realistic person and he, yeah. he thinks a lot about football because it's quite smart for him asking for this, in my opinion. And this will be, uh, besides the, the language maybe, this will be the, the biggest challenge for him uh, of all. I, I, you, you touched on it there and I, I'd like to ask if you, if you do know, but from United looking, you, you're completely right in everything you're saying there. The problems that we've got at our club and how it's run, you've got to do more than one thing really because the structure's not there. Uh, what was the working relationship like between Overmars, between uh, Ten Hag and Van der Sar? Did what was Ten Hag just purely focused on the coaching, and he allowed Overmars to sort of control the recruitment with Van der Sar? Did they do all of that, or was Ten Hag involved in that sort of stuff as well? Um, well, Sam, let's please not get into why Overmars is not at the club anymore. No, we won't do that. <laughs> but uh, you would, we would be here uh, still if, if that didn't happen. But um, the um, yeah, the, 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 the working relationship they had is they both had a fido. So if they want to attract a certain player or sell, if one of them wasn't on board on it, it wouldn't happen. And I think this is what he wants also at Manchester United. He's, he's used to this, to being able to construct the squad like he wants. And um, this is the relationship he had with Overmars. So uh, I think that's great. Not only Overmars or maybe a little bit from the start of deciding what to do. He was a big part of it. And um, I think I think this is the way. This is the first big step that has to be made at Manchester United. Because let's be honest, the the the, the players you signed last seasons, I, I just sometimes do not understand why you get a Sancho for like what is it, 85, 90 millions? I do not know how much it is in pounds. Seven, no, seventy two million we pay for him in pounds. 72. Yeah, so maybe that's a, a lot more in, in, in euros. So um, you have so many wingers already. And I know a lot of uh, uh, supporters are fed up with Marcus Rashford and stuff, but I do think he is still a future at the club and he can play also in those positions, you know. He, he has so many great wingers at the club. So it baffles me to see now the rumors that they, they want to bring in Anthony. Maybe Ten Hag is demanding it, I do not know. But please, for your club, go and sign some midfielders, go and sign some defenders. The problem at, at, at your, uh, in, your, in your team is from the back. Please, please yeah. sign <laughs> midfielders. My God, do, do, you, you may as well call yourself a Manchester United fan because you, you definitely know about the problems at our club. I have some experience uh, about now, but uh, I watch it, uh, watch it a little bit more, so I, I know what I'm talking about a bit more than in the past. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. It's it's very strange how we've managed to overlook the most important part of the entire team for years and years and years. And hopefully that, I mean, if that doesn't get resolved, then Ten Hag has no chance. There's no chance without a midfield. Now, obviously, you're playing PSV tomorrow. Good luck to you. No, not tomorrow, Thank Sunday. You. Good yes, luck sir. to you. Um, uh, and I hope that, I hope that goes well. Leicester, obviously, knocking PSV out of the Europa Conference League. Hopefully, that puts them in a bad mood. Nice. But then, of course, that man comes. And I know I know you won't like that man there. No, but, we, no. but we all love him. So you love him as a player. He was great. Uh, he was, he, I, I still stands as the best striker I think we've had in the Premier League. I love the guy. But yeah. what sort of send-off do you think it will be? Because... A lot of what's been talked about about the announcement of Ten Hag is that it needs to be done on Ajax's terms, on Ten Hag's terms, which is completely good. It absolutely should be respectful like that. Do you think, as an Ajax fan, do you think it's going to negatively affect you for the last few games? Say the, say the announcement's made next week after the PSV game. Do you expect it? Because me looking looking in, because he's been there for so long and he's on the verge of winning his third domestic double, right? I, I look at it as Ajax players and fans would just want to give Ten Hag the best send-off ever. I feel like it might give a little bit of a boost rather than a negative. What What do you think as a fan? Are you worried about the announcement of what's coming after it? Or do you think everybody's going to pull in together to give Ten Hag a, a great send-off? I do think we all gave him a great send-off because if you're a little bit familiar with our club culture and with persons like players and coaches that done really well at our club, 
I do not think there are a lot of clubs in, in the world that give send-offs like we do. Even if we are not able to, we bring him back like a half year later and during a match we give him a send-off like Van der Sar is, 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 is giving a, a speech, you know, uh, for, for the whole fans in the stadium. And we love our, our players and we, we value them and we give him a send-off always like a big send-off. So also with Ten Hag, this will definitely happen. Um, about the announcing, yeah. Uh, I, I thought beforehand, like a few weeks ago, that we would actually wait until we became champions, if it's early, you know, like a few games uh, before the end of the season mm -hmm. or maybe at the end of the season. But I'm, I'm quite baffled that maybe the announcement will be after the cup match already because I didn't expect that. And we have to wait and see. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, you know, or maybe I'm right. We have to wait and see. The announcement isn't here yet. Yeah, it, 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 may, it may not happen. You may be right. I, I think we all, from a, from a selfish perspective, Manchester United, we would like it to be announced as soon as possible. So we, it's over the line and we can start thinking about next summer. But you're obviously in a cup final and you're top of the league by four points. So yeah. you're still in... That's why it has to be done on Ajax's terms. But look, I'm so excited about the idea of Ten Hag, I think what he's done at Ajax has been fantastic. Um, the club that he's built up twice, the teams that he's built up twice, it's obvious that he's a very elite level coach. Now, I, I would say thank you very much to Ajax. Um, <laughs> I, I, I hope that you get the best send off possible. Genuinely, I'm, I might come to Amsterdam for that because I love Amsterdam is legitimately one of my favorite cities in the world. And I'd love to be there on that day to see the sort of send off that he gets because I know it will be incredible. So maybe we'll meet up for a beer we on that day. We're there, then we drink a beer, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But no, Ajax, thank you very much uh, for, for yeah. joining us. You can uh, Anybody who wants to follow Ajax, the socials are in the description of the video, the link to the We Talk Ajax channel as well. Make sure you go down there, follow them. Thank you very much for your time today. As I said, thank you very much for coming on because it can't be the easiest conversation to have, talking about us taking your manager 48 hours before you're in a cup final against your biggest rivals, you know? I actually been put in a little bit of a tricky situation, but I suppose that's that's football, right? And that's and that's kind of you said at the start of the video. You're you're a club that, and a fan base that's used to, I suppose, your best players, and and sometimes your managers leaving and then new ones coming through. And I I hope who who, who do you have any idea who uh, is there like a a favourite that's been talked about to replace Ten Hag? Um, there have been some names dropped, but uh, we actually did a video on it last uh, last week. So um, with a personal top three, my personal favorite is Peter Bos because I do think he has unfinished business at the club. Uh, I will not get into deep uh, into it because he left uh, under certain circumstances. Some things happened, but he went to the Europa League final and then he moved away because of principles. Yeah. So uh, I do think he can uh, bring something to the club if he gets a few more years to like um, do his magic. So for me, this is the number one priority coach. But yeah, we will have to wait and see uh, who will get it, you know, because actually we're not busy with that at the moment. We need the director of football first because Overmars' spot still hasn't been filled. Yeah. And this is maybe priority number one. And I think when the official announcement has been made and uh, that Ten Hag will leave for Manchester United, for you guys, uh, hopefully, <laughs> then we will start uh, getting rumors who will be the successor of him. But first, uh, we have to finish that cup game and hopefully get the championship. And then uh, the circus will start, I think. Well, look, as I said, good luck to you on Sunday. I really hope you win. Uh, and then maybe Rude can win the title next season. But I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's going to happen. No, but, look, but thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate your time. As I said, uh, I wish you the best of luck. And genuinely, I might come to Amsterdam for that because I think that'll yeah. be a great day. Yeah. <laughs> but no, take it, very, take it easy, buddy. And uh, yeah. yeah, good luck on Sunday. I said it already. Yeah.